everyone. I uh, hope you all had a very wonderful day up till now. My name is Vishruti Kashyap, and today I will be introducing uh, you all to my team and our problem statement. So our problem statement is design on particulate matter and trace gas sensors for lower tropospheric measurements using tethered weather balloons. What this means is that we will be using a tethered weather balloon to send a payload up to the boundary layer of the troposphere, which is around the 2 to 2.5 meters above uh, mean sea level, where we will try to monitor the amount of particulate matter and trace gases. So here are our team members, Charvish Sri S, Tia Saronan, Tatyani Parkevar, Rudra Ramji, and myself, Vishruji Kachan. Charvi and Dia worked on the particulate matter sensor. Katyaini worked on the balloon. Rudra, Ram, Rudra and me worked on the trace gas sensors. I would like to hand it over to Rudra now to explain the technical aspects of our project, including its structure. Thank you, Vishu. So why do we want to detect particulate matter and trace gases? First, we need to know what they are. Particulate matter are solid or liquid particles which are suspended in Earth's, at Earth's atmosphere. They can be also referred to as aerosols. These are very fine. As you can see in the picture, they're even sm smaller than the human hair. Now, what are trace gases? Trace gases are gases that constitute less than 1% of the total air composition of the environment. Both particulate matter and trace gases play a significant role in, in human health, environment, and the gro global radiation budget of the Earth. Most of the sources for particulate matter and trace gases are near the Earth's surface. Now, how do we plan to get our sensors up into the boundary layer of the atmosphere? We'll be using balloons. Balloons have been used for a very long time. They were first introduced by the French meteorologist, Debot, who used hydrogen balloons for studying the upper troposphere and stratosphere. Nowadays, tethered and untethered balloons are used for many uh, reasons, for military applications, recreational purposes, and earth science and observations and studies. Now, this is the general overview of our entire project structure. The parts highlighted in yellow are what are going to be presented to you today. As mentioned earlier, we have divided ourselves into three teams. Our first team is going to do the principal design of the particulate matter sensors. The next team is going to do the principal design of the trace gas sensors. While the third team is going to do the balloon configuration and the tethering and ascent control systems. I would now like to hand it over to to Charvi to explain the particulate matter sensor. Thank you, Rudra. So there are two main methods to um, measure particulate matter. First one is concentration based and the second one is size distribution. For the PM sensor, we'll be using the optical method and the scattering principle. Can we move on? So there are two kinds of scatterings that can occur. First one being relay scattering. Relay scattering occurs when the particle size is much smaller than the wavelength of light. And it when light is scattered, it is scattered in all directions. An example is the blue light being scattered in the sky, which makes the sky appear blue. Second one being me scattering. Me scattering it occurs when the particle size is comparable to or greater than the wavelength of light. Particle matter. Particulate matter of size one micrometer or greater cause me scattering of visible light. So to ensure that there is no error in the calculation of particulate matter, we need to make sure there is a smooth airflow in our channel. A smooth airflow or a laminar airflow can be uh, predicted using the calculations of a Reynolds number. To make sure that uh, the uh, airflow is a laminar airflow, the Reynolds number has to be less than 2000. So we have found an axial fan with whose airflow rate is of 0 0.01 meter cube per minute. And uh, Dia has 
ca uh, carried out the calculations of the Reynolds number using the diameter of uh, the channel as 8 millimeter, velocity as 3.316 meter per second, and we have derived as the Reynolds number as um, 1805. So this is the proposed design of the PM sensor. We have divided this sensor into three parts, the inlet, the measurement uh, compartment, and the outlet. So uh, we have placed an axial fan towards the outlet, which allows a pressure, to be, a pressure difference to be created to allow the air flow to flow in. As the air flows in, if there is particulate matter present in this air, it will encounter the laser light source, which causes scattering. This scattering is detected by the photodiode, which we have proposed to place at an angle of 48 degrees to 50 degrees, as per our literature survey. And um, the scattered intensity of light will be proportional to the total number of particles and second being scattering cross-section area of particle pressure difference. Now I'd like to hand it over to Rudra to walk us through the design of trace gas sensor. Thank you, Chuck. To detect trace gases, we'll be using the simple, simple principle of the beer lamberts law. The law states that they, they there's a drop in intensity of light uh, due to the concentrate sorry there's a drop in, in uh, the drop in intensity of light is directly proportional to the um, uh, concentration of a substance present in a medium through which the light is traveling through this means that more the concentration of a medium more the light will be absorbed the formula for the beer lambert's law is i equals i naught into e raised to the power minus u into x. I stands for the final intensity of light. I naught stands for the initial intensity of light. E stands for your Euler's number, which is something like pi. U is the coefficient of extinction. And x is the depth in meter. Now, how do we plan to detect trace gases? We'll be using an NDIR sensor. NDIR stands for a non-dispersive infrared sensor. It's non-dispersive, meaning that no dispersive element, such as a prism, is used to separate out the broad, broadband light into a narrow spectrum. This will help us, as we'll be using a singular light bulb to detect two gases which absorb different wavelengths of light. We will be detecting carbon dioxide and methane. These gases absorb infrared wavelength of 4.26 microns and 2.30 microns respectively. We will have an IR bulb shine a light throughout the chamber and the fall in the intensity of light can be detected by a photodiode covered with a wavelength filter. This is our general design of the trace gas sensor. We will have a single inlet which will then be split into two tubes. At the end of each of the tubes, there will be a photodiode covered with a wavelength filter of the gas of which we are going to detect. To get the initial intensity of the light, we'll have two photodiodes covered with the wavelength filter near the infrared light source. Now the falling intensity can be seen if can be detected by the two photodiodes kept at the end of the chamber. I would now like to hand it over to Katyaini to walk us through the tethered balloon design. Thank you, Rudra. So uh, the what is a tethered weathered balloon? It is basically a balloon which is fastened to a ground rope or a cable and in, uh, flying it ensures it remains in a uh, space and avoids drifting from a place like a typical hot balloon, hot air balloon will. Considering three working fluids, we used hydrogen, helium, and hot air. Although hydrogen and helium are usually considered as an ideal, ideal fuel and are lighter than air, they have their own drawbacks. Hydrogen being uh, flammable and helium being expensive, we have cons recommending consider the use of hot air. The heating in increases the internal energy of the air resulting in expansion so the balloon moves upward. 
As for the heating mechanism, there are two basic mechanisms that we considered, which were combustion and electrical. But we are avoiding the combustion method because the he, due to the heating and the burning of the burners, there might be small amount of trace gases like CO2 release and which might hamper with our detection of the sensors. So therefore, we are using an electrical method in which there will be an electrically heated coil which will heat the air in order for the balloon to fly. Now, taking in the account of stability, there is active stabilization and passive stabilization. Active stabilization being the use of ducted fans, microthrusters, or the anchoring system of the balloon, of how the winch of the balloon works and the how much uh, tension force can it withstand. And the passive stabilization consists of the design of the balloon of how much more aerodynamic it is and how it minimizes the air resistance and the stability of the balloon on varying wind conditions. This is the calculation that we came up with in, in order to calculate the volume of hydrogen, helium and hot air needed. We used a, a minimum altitude of one kilometer and a payload of three kilometers. Using the equation given, which is P equals to P naught E raised to H minus H upon H, where the small h signifies the height one kilometer and the h signifies the scale height, which is 8.5 kilometers for Earth. Using this and the other equation, which is T naught is equal to TH, we calculated the densities and then further the volume of the hydrogen, helium and hot air. For hydrogen, it is a about 2.89 uh, meter cube for helium it is 3.11 meter cube and for hot air considering at a average uh, temperature of 70 degrees celsius it's 9.66 meter cube now vishrut i would like to take you over uh, for the summary thank you Katrin. so to summarize our presentation the present study outlines the development of particulate matter sensors and trace gas sensors for lower tropospheric missions. A simple scattering-based particular uh, particulate counter design is proposed for estimating the PM10 concentration in the air. A trace gas sensor design for detecting carbon dioxide and methane based on Beer Lambert's law is supposed. Volumetric uh, estimations of different working fluids required for lifting three kilograms of weight is presented. We need to further refine the sensor designs while taking into account the electronic components, circuit boards, and code designs along with calibrating such sensors. We have yet to estimate, uh, we have yet to study the estimations of uh, power requirements for hot air balloon configuration and active stabilization configurations. Now I would like to extend my gratitude towards all who have helped us through this project. Firstly, thank you to SST ERD organization for giving us this fantastic opportunity to show our skills through, through these four weeks. Special thanks to Nishita Ma'am uh, for giving it her all to make sure the entire project runs smoothly. I would like to thank our mentor, Atharva Sir and Tejas Sir who helped us through every step of the step of this project, making sure that we have no doubts and that the entire project goes smoothly. Thank you to everyone who helped us out through these four things. Thank you very much, Team Ben Bon. Again, um, I see the the kind of effort that is put through your presentation, the project that you have done. And, uh, and and your presentation also came out to be really good. Um, congratulations on that. I now leave the stage open for the questions. Uh, please post your questions either on the chat to me or openly to everyone. You can also unmute yourself or raise your hand and I can um, let you ask questions. Yes, we have Avni. I've asked this before, and since it's everything is mostly complete, have you thought about how you are going to, um, what can I say, how are you going to manage bad weather conditions and prevent, you know, people from vandalizing the balloon? How are you going to protect it, basically? So for uh, the bad weather, 
we are actually going to first see the weather report and weather conditions before the launch of the balloon. And as for the people, we uh, we have to do it in a remote area, or we actually I don't really see the thing of someone vandalizing a thing, but we'll have to try to do it in a remote area. All right, thank you. On that, uh, I have uh, a question. Uh, okay, oh, yeah. Alex, yes, let's go ahead, Nikita. Now, on the similar line to Agni, I have a question too. Um, did you do any research on the policy aspect of it? As in, see, where the balloon is so much different from a normal balloon. So, do you have, I mean, did you do research on? Can you just launch it by yourself or any permissions to be taken? Anything on that aspect? Ma'am, uh, that will be part of the future works for a project which we might continue after this program. Okay, that's, that's very important because uh, it involves at least three to four uh, rounds of permissions to be taken from the government and uh, say the airport authority and, and and several things. So, in if in case you you want to con continue this, which we want you to continue working on this project, you have to do a lot of research on the permission aspect of it. Yeah, uh, so that I'll let you ask, ask the question. Um, you said uh, to avoid, uh, you know vandalism and uh, other not other you know artificial harm you would do it in a, a remote area but uh, wouldn't that affect like the usability the whole purpose of this would be to you know maybe uh, detect uh, poisonous gases or uh, stuff like that that could be harmful for people or uh, you know, generally, can you just uh, uh, enlighten me about the usability of the project as a whole? Uh, so, so, the usability of our project is actually uh, because first, uh, these particulate matter and CO2 and the trace gases can uh, really affect the global radiation budget. They some cool the earth, some heat the earth. And so we can't really say which one of them are good, which are bad. And so we are planning to detect all of them. And uh, uh, so we can see how much is good and how much is bad. So, but I will come back to you on this later. I'll do my research. Okay, uh, with that, a small follow-up. Uh wouldn't it be extremely localized because i don't think the balloon is uh, movable you can't relocate it if i'm right so it does Anything? have a winch it does have a winch but we have not planned upon if we are making it a very pivoted winch or will we have a winch which is mobile as well so will we we will need to work upon that as well according to the balloon design since it's a it's a tethered balloon right so you will also have to it's going to be like a one off shot so it'll go up and until the air's hot but then you'll have to refuel or uh, you know reheat the balloon for that we are using actually battery powered electrical coils as i we mentioned previously in order to heat it and it will act more like a hot air balloon so we won't need to bring it down again and again to okay uh, right right thank you oh, also great, great. i i think what siddharth asked was the tethered balloon stationed at one point now if you want to find more information about various places um it might not be you so uh i mean when he asked something came to my mind but is there any any other idea that you have thought that you can use the same tethered balloon uh, to find in to to get more data from different places ma'am we did not really consider that idea of getting data from different places the main aspect of the project was focusing more on detection of gases Right. But we might consider your opinion towards it. You know, you can even look at uh, sort, uh, you know, uh, air current systems uh, su such that 
you can see from where the wind is coming that way uh, you can cover a larger area theoretically by station by being stationary uh, we'll look into that as well so what i was thinking was could you could you put connect this tethered uh, balloon um, i mean I'm, i'm just thinking okay to to a vehicle and you move this vehicle around so i'm not sure how, how that so ma'am ma i mentioned that uh, we are not sure if uh, you have any pivoted winch or a mobile winch mm. you need to consider that according to uh, right, requirements right. of the uh, sensors right Cool. Okay. Uh, this, uh, if I may give some clarifications regarding those uh, ideas which was proposed, uh, the thing, the problem that you will have when you keep moving the balloon when the reading is being taken is the reading is not localized, and the reading that they would be lo looking at should be localized at a particular point. And also, when you are moving, the balloon can be wet, as Katyani was pointing out, and you might not have a proper vertical. raising and you will have to look for uh, active uh, stabilization mechanisms which will again add more working parts to the balloon which is not required uh, so i i'm not sure how many of you have heard about this uh, balloon launches taking place every day at 12 noon uh, all over the world so th this is something like a campaign which is run uh, with uh, multiple institutions uh, taking part because you need more readings for weather studies so this tethered balloon concept which uh, the team is proposing is mostly meant to be used as a reusable uh, mechanism uh, for boundary layer monitoring so it has to be localized reading itself of a particular place and not meant to be mobile everywhere yeah so i hope that gives some light thank you uh, do we have anyone else with any question yeah. please Oh uh, yeah, 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 I have a question. So yes. hi team. Um, I don't think that I'm asking the same question which everyone does. Um, also, I'm not being pessimistic here. I just wanted to know how you thought through this. So did you uh, decide that you want to measure a particular matter and phase gas quality? Then you decided to use hot air balloon as mode, or did you decide that I have to use hot air balloon and I want to do something with that? So did you think through that? I have a follow-up question to this, but I, I want an answer to this. So, so what actually happened is we first decided to measure only particulate matter using uh -huh. a remote-controlled airplane. Then we realized that the range will not be good, and the and the plane will also not be reusable. So then we decided uh, to move on to a weather balloon. and they just sir uh, gave us the idea of also uh, like measuring trace gases okay uh, i mean that was my follow up question as well so why why do you think uh, unmanned aerial vehicle wouldn't be like reusable so the, forget about uh, planes but you you can use uh, drones no which can stay put at particular altitude and which is also not susceptible for weathers i mean extreme weathers and stuff It, I think in a way it's better than hot air balloons. Don't you think? Controlling it in terms of controlling. So initially we did consider using an uh, unmanned aircraft or more, much more of a drone. But then since we were working on everything, including the sensor designs and the designs of the balloon, we thought it would be more beneficial to have a main focus on the working of the design and of the gas sensors and how the. main payload works instead of the design of the vehicle that we are using to deploy it in the atmosphere so we deviated from working with an aircraft to working with a balloon and mainly focusing our things on the uh, particulate matter and the gas sensors and uh, to add on to katyani's point uh, another reason why we did not use a drone or a unmanned uh, or a uav was because the range for most of these are very less like we uh, like even though like there are some which have the range of 3 or 4 kilometers they are not very commercially available and they are also very expensive and therefore a weather balloon makes most sense because the usual drone which you get give you only around 250 meters of range for control 
Okay, all right. Right, so I have a quick question. Um, so what do you think are the future scopes uh, for uh, for your sensor? Your guys are developing a sensor. So what are the, uh, whatever work you have done apart from that, what are the future scopes uh, which you want to put into the sensor design? So uh, we first are going to get all the components needed. Then we have to get a very, uh, because the designs which we gave are with the very basic designs. And when we only when we get our components, can we see if these designs are good or not? So our future scope for this project is first to get all the electronics, all the and to like make our design proper and then to launch our balloon and as we pointed out we hadn't yet finished the full design of our balloon and whether we are going to use active or passive stabilization and so we have to work all of that okay Um, yes, Naira. Yes. Good evening, Ms. Nikita, and good evening to the team. So from what I understood from your uh, presentation and your idea was that if you're sending your balloon or getting it a lift, then how would it return back and how would you relocate its position? Because that's something you would be needing to get an idea of where your balloon is currently located. So what are your plans for that? Um, hi, Myra. So to answer your question, as you mentioned before, it's a tethered weather balloon. So we could use a mechanism that we could heat or we could reduce the heat of, heat of the coil that is heating the hot air in the balloon and it would suspend down eventually. Or probably we could use the winch that, it's, that is attached to the balloon to bring it down. As for the relocation part, uh, we already talked about that a lot. And uh, your point made, uh, made uh, like, got me into a point that if we are relocating the balloon, the, there might be some turbulent forces that might affect the readings of the sensors and which will not be very beneficial. Like the readings won't be true that we are what we are looking for. So I don't think we'll need to relocate a balloon a lot. I okay, thank you for answering my questions. It's a bit clear now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do we have uh, any any other questions to the team in Bonn? So we will go with one more question, if there's any. All right. I'll consider that there's no extra questions. Um, in case if there's any questions, um, anyone get and anyone wants to get in touch with the team in Bonn or even the team. Astra, feel free to write to us and we would redirect to the team. Thank you very much again, all the audience who were there and uh, congratulations for the team, for, the, for both the teams on wonderful presentation of your one month of hard work. And I think uh, we are good to go from here. Thank you very much everyone for joining. I'll